back to our study about evil. And we're in the topic of misery, pain, and suffering of evil. And under this, this is our sick, the number 10. And about the study of evil, it's just having problems. I don't know if Facebook is acting up or keeps going on and off. But in our study of evil, we've 26 pages. We are on number 30 of our series. And we need all 30. Because it's important that we get everything about evil. And yet, in this study, I haven't touched evil 100%. There are some places in the Bible that we're not going to touch. And evil, picking up in Deuteronomy 26, 6, again, under the, the heading of misery, pain, and suffering, we pick up Deuteronomy 26, 6. And the Egyptians' evil entreated us. And afflicted us and laid upon us hard bondage, slavery, brutality caused by the Egyptians to the Hebrews. And it's an evil. I'm not going to de defend uh, slavery, I'm not going to say it's proper and right. Exodus 1, 13 and 14, the Egyptians made the children of Israel to serve with rigor. And they made their lives bitter with hardship and mortar, and in brick and all manner of service in the field. And all their service wherein they made them serve with rigor. So, I mean, here's an evil. And, you know, I apologize, my throat is dry. When I went through public school, and I graduated in 1987 out of high school, I've heard about American slavery, and it's harsh. Never once did I hear out the classroom the slavery that the Egyptians, the Africans, put God's people to. And the Bible speaks of a slavery and brutality. Here are the Egyptians to the Hebrews. And I would stand also to the fact is any slavery is evil. When there is slavery and brutality, listen, a man is slave to his job. You got to do things and you got to perform things that, or you're not going to get that paycheck. Judges 20, verse 34. I'm going to try and get my, I apologize. Yeah, keep my throat going. And I, I apologize for the Facebook thing. I don't know what's going on. But slavery, 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 can't even say it, and brutality, it's an evil. And yet, it's still going on in 2020. There are nations and places where people are, are slaves and being brutally treated and misconduct to them in the harshest way and some of it's in the name of religion so let me take this down and this is two days that we've been having a problem i apologize And some of the, some of the 
slavery is in the name of religion. Some of the slavery is in the name of a custom or tradition. Some of the slavery is in the name of sex. And it is an evil. Judges 20 verse 34. And there came against Gibeah 10,000 chosen men out of all Israel. And the battle was sore. But they knew not that evil was near them. So here there are liars in wait. A hidden military force. They had no idea were there. But forced the enemy that had God against them. God and Israel were going to attack the Benjamites. And the Benjamites had committed a serious sin protecting Sodomites. And the sin causes evil. Now, here is pain, misery, and death. Because a group of people were protecting sinners. Sinners here were the Sodomites. They ravished a man's house to get a hold of a man that, was, that visited the guy's house. For sexual relations, like the story of Lot, the man turns his wife over to the crowd and they just sexually abuse her all night, which brings forth her death. Israel, in retaliation against the children of Benjamin, come out with war. And I believe it's the third attempt that they going to drive the Benjamins out, Benjaminites out of the city and once they drive them to a certain point there is liars in wait that will go into the city while the soldiers are gone and they're going to destroy and burn the city. This evil and punishment and suffering and death is losing the battle with God and man because of sin. Now, none of these people were involved with that sin. But they defended the sinner. And America needs to learn that America is defending, and England and other nations, they are defending the sodomites, the homosexuals, the lesbian, the bestiality. And there's going to be innocent people who are going to be involved in this evil that God will have against them. Because, listen, to the fact is, and if you don't like it, it's tough, and you hate what I have to say, that's tough. Sodomy. Homosexuality, lesbian, and bestiality is against God. It's against the word of God. It's an abomination. And if you continue as a nation, as a group of people, defending sinners, and then there will be e evil, pain, misery, suffering, and loss that will come upon you, and it's already happening in America. We don't want to hear about slavery. We don't want to hear about sodomites and all that. It's a Bible subject. And it is something that God's against. And it's something that produces evil. Yeah, you got the right to do whatever you want to do. But God is holy and righteous to do what he says he will do. Judges 20 verse 41. And when the men of Israel turned again, the men of Benjamin were amazed, for they saw that evil was come upon them. And this is the same of Judges 20, 34. The evil, <coughs> the loss, the pain, the suffering, death, is from losing the war for defending sin. A, a, 
an evil that will come upon a church is when a church will defend a sin of the person or people in that church and not judge it, not correct it, not discipline it, but favor and, ex and exhort and we won't read them passages. We won't touch those subjects for all are welcome. And when we mean all are welcome in our church, we're not going to touch sin. We're not going to preach against sin. We're going to to tolerate it. There'll be loss, death, pain, and suffering. There'll be a losing of the war. And when a family will tolerate sin, whether it be a spouse, whether it be a children, or grandparents, or aunts, or uncles, or whatever the, the kinship is, we're going to tolerate sin because of my dear loved one is involved with it. And if the church is going to preach against it, we'll find another church, we'll just drop out totally. Now you have a family that will be lost, death, pain, and suffering. As a nation, as a city, was lost, death, pain, and suffering for defending sinners and sin. 1 Samuel 6, 9. Sin is a serious issue. Sin is what Jesus Christ came away from his throne. I came to seek that which is lost and suffered and died upon Calvary's cross because the sins of man never in the realm of God's holiness are we to defend sin, but we are to preach against it. And we're to preach that if you don't repent, you don't turn, you're going to burn. And I've had Christians tell me, oh, I don't like to turn and burn. Well, what else is there? You must have somebody in your family, you must have somebody in your camp, if it's not yourself, that you are sinning against God, and we don't want to cause no friction, we don't want to cause no trouble, we don't want to cause no problem. We don't want to be offended. We're just going to love them. And we're going to give them all kinds of care. And to avoid the, the abrasion of someone sinning in the camp. You're going to bring evil upon yourself and others involved. Of loss, death, pain, and suffering. Which you try to avoid. By defending sin. 1 Samuel 6, 9, and see, if it go up the way of the coast of Beth Shemesh, then he has done us this great evil. But if not, then we shall know that it was not his hand, God's hand, that smote us. It was a chance that happened to us. Now what happened is, the Ark of the Covenant has been taken by the Philistines in battle. And the Ark of the Covenant has been in the house of Dagon and the Philistines, their God. And the Philistines have been plagued with emeralds and might. What would be likened to what the Black Plague was during the Dark Ages. And in the Philistine camp of their five cities, there has been death. There has been pain. There has been misery. Evil. This great evil. And the Philistines come to the point we've had enough. Now, what, what, what shall we do to get rid of the, em, the, the, the emeralds and the mice? And the emeralds is a type of hemorrhoid. And they're like, take the Ark of the Covenant and give it back to God. We're not going to talk about that. It's not to say. We're talking about the evil. The evil is that Dagon twice fell down before the Ark of the Covenant, God, 
bowing down before God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob and of the Bible, the second time when they set Dagon back up, he has fallen over and is beheaded and the palms of his hands have been cut off. And they get the emeralds. And they get the might, and they get pain, and they get suffering, and they get lost, and they get death. A great evil out of their mouths, First Samuel 6, 9. And they say that mice was the cause of the plague of the Black Death. So what was the plague? Science believe it was the bubonic plague also known as the Bacterium Yersinia pestis. pestis. Yersinia pestis typically affects the oriental rat flea, which in turn affects small rodents such as mice, rodents, and squirrels. As a rodent host dies, infected fleas seek and bite humans. Alternatively, the bubonic plague can be transformed from human to human. VIA bacterium and the infected person's cough, although this is rare and requires extreme close contact. Now, this is copyright 2019, the Center of National Interest, All Rights Reserved, The Black Death, How Rats, Fleas, and Germs Almost Wiped Out Europe, March 11, 2017. If you think COVID 19 is terrible, this was given the name of the Black Death, and this is almost liking what was going on in the, 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 the Philistine area, and they called it a great evil, and I can imagine what you would call such a plague called the Black Death, and it caused loss, death, pain, and suffering. The Philistines had something that belonged to Israel. And God wanted it back. And God was not going to release his suffering of lost pain and suffering and death until they returned what was his and what was Israel's. According to the Centers of Disease Control and Prevention, patients develop a sudden onset of fever, headaches, chills, and weakness. One or more swollen, tender, painful lip nodes. This form is usually the result of affected in, infected flea bite. The bacteria multiply in the lip node, closest to where the bacteria enter the human body. If the patient is not treated with appropriate biotic, antibiotics, the bacteria can spread to other parts of the body. Left untreated, bubonic plague can turn to a sept septimus plague. As the plague bacteria multiply and cause fever and chills, extreme weakness, abdominal pain, shock, internal bleeding, and organ death. Emrods is a hemorrhoid pile of the rectum with a discharge of blood. That's Webster's 1828 Dictionary of Emeralds. You know what the evil was the case of the, of the Philistines? It was a hemorrhoid or a type of hemorrhoid. You know what else attacked them? Almost black death type of thing. You know what could be an evil today spreading around 2020 since March? A little thing called COVID-19. COVID-19, I do believe, and honestly, it is a judgment of God, and God is not getting the response that he wants to get. God gave the Philistines hemorrhoids, or type thereof. He gave them these fleas that brought about a, a plague that brought death. It brought pain. It brought sorrow. It brought suffering. It brought the Philistines to say, God, what do you want us to do? I want you to bring that ark back. And they brought the ark back. What does God want from COVID-19? 
He wants the people to turn or burn. He wants them to repent of their sins and get right with God, but they're not getting right with God. They're denying God. And surely a few weeks ago in Daytona Beach, Florida, was not the response that God wants from COVID-19. There's a preacher there preaching on the streets, call the cops and shut him up. And they shut the preacher up for one week, me. I was on a public sidewalk where the Supreme Court in the United States, where we're fighting right now to get a, a Supreme Court justice on the bench to replace one that has died. <laughs> Quinky dinky. The Christian Law Association, I, I believe I can say their names, they're a great help to Christian ministries. They are busy with their hands being into the ministries of the government shutting churches down, the government shutting street preachers down. The government shutting down people gathering together to sing hymns. This country is turning against what God wants. Repentance. And believing on the Lord Jesus Christ to be saved. The Philistines were smarter than the Americans. If the Americans don't repent and get right. I don't see them doing it and getting right. So the, the evil here is soreness and plagues and pain and suffering hemorrhoids. And a plague near the bubonic death or the black death that happened in Europe. that almost wiped out the entire European nation. 1 Samuel 20, verse 7. What I'm saying is, as you turn to 1 Samuel 20, verse 7, God may use an evil to get you to repent. God used an evil for the Philistines to say, hey, that's not ours. Give it back to God. God used an evil against the protectors of the Benjamite sinners. Hey, you want to defend those sinners? Fine. You just lost the city. You just lost lives. You just lost in pain. You just lost in suffering. If you want to be involved in slavery and all that, God says in his word that that was evil. And even still today, slavery is evil. No matter who is the slave, what race the slave is, God calls it evil. And if you're a slave owner, you're going to be charged by God as a sin. 1 Samuel 20, verse 7. If he say thus, it is well, thy servant shall have peace. But if he be very wroth, then he's sure that evil is determined by him. Now this is Jonathan and David speaking about Jonathan's father, King Saul. King Saul is angry with David. And King Saul wants David dead. And King Saul will murder David to make sure David's dead. When David has not done anything. What is the evil that Jonathan and David are talking about? It's an evil wanting someone dead. And so much you want them dead, you will even do it yourself. You know, when you read about King Saul, he brought thousands of men with him. And I've heard people say, you know, David and his mighty men, he needed those thousands of men. I don't think David's men were that mighty. God is. God is that mighty. But I think it's, I think what King Saul is saying is, I'm going to gather thousands of men with David and his 600. Because I'm going to gather thousands of men because I want to make sure I get the job done. 
with the thousands of men, I am not going to miss David, though God says, sorry, you're going to miss David. So it's a fact. There is evil. Evil can be somebody wants you dead. I don't know. I've been I've been a street preacher now many years. I've been a street preacher at the farmers market here six over six years. There may be an evil to the fact is maybe somebody wants me dead. I don't know. But we see that with King Saul. I know there's an evil of the city of Daytona Beach because they want me to shut up. They want me to stop. And they had pulled all what resources they have presently to shut me up. They had pulled DJs and other things to shut me up. That's an evil. The word of God. But it has caused me no pain. I haven't suffered affliction from it. But there's an evil where somebody wants you dead and they will do whatever they can to get you dead. And then there's an evil that is from God. It could be as simple as a hemorrhoid. It could be simple as a COVID-19. It could be simple, uh, as simple as bubonic plague. It could be as simple as, the, as a common flu. That will cause you pain and suffering and misery. And then there could be an evil against a people, a person, a city, a church, a family, a government that you're going to protect a sinner or sinners. You're going to stand up and give a right to religions to practice their false religions and give them freedom to do that. And God's like, I never authorized that. Where do you get the idea to allow religions to practice freely? And then as religions are allowed to practice freely, the Bible believe in born again Christian Baptists are insulted, are attacked, and everybody jumps on the wagon to attack the preacher. But the man over there can be selling marijuana or marijuana oil, whatever you call that junk. And that man over there could be allowed to be selling bad fruits and vegetables. He puts them on the bottom and puts a few good ones. There, he's allowed to do that. But don't let him preach Jesus or the gospel or the Bible. And then there's an evil of the slavery. The rough treatment, the affliction, the bondage. And you know what? You don't have to be a, a, a slave to have that evil. You can be an employer and miserably in treating your employees or employee and you're just driving them with, with, with affliction. You're just driving them with torture. You're just driving, because they got to keep that job. They got to keep that check coming in. And, they're, and you are just forcing them of hard labor. And you're taking advantage of an employee. And that, my friend, is evil too. Now, evil can be the result of God for you to repent and get right or chastisement. Evil can be upon the, uh, of the devil. And evil can be upon other men. And evil will cause loss, death, pain, and suffering. It would be to drive you down your knees and ask a holy and righteous God. Why is this evil happening? 
and to what glory of God the Father and God the Son, Jesus Christ, can get out of this glory.